everybody, I'm just a bird among the trees and I am back on campus in my unofficial office that is the greenhouse. Uh, everything is growing very beautifully. There are uh, lemons growing on the lemon tree back by the window. Let me climb back here. Beautiful lemons growing on the lemon tree. They're very nice. The tomatoes are growing well. The fig tree has so many little baby figs on it. Like every branch has so many figs. And we are going to be continuing forward with the aquaponics, the large scale aquaponics, which we just got the um, IDC tote that we'll use as the basically basis for this pond because this pond leaks and it's a problem. We've got the IDC tote over in the bike shed. Look at the size of this thing. It's so big. So this is this is 330 gallons that's going to be the basis of our large scale aquaponics setup which we're going to start this year. I'm super excited about that. And if I turn the camera around, um, you can see that the, these beds are basically vacant and are back to being pretty dusty. But we did move the uh, strawberries over to the sunny side, which I'll show you in a second. And over here at the sunny side, the strawberries have been moved to a place of permanent residence. They're a little overgrown right now, but they are doing very, very well. I'm looking forward to getting some off this. These grapes are not doing so well. I don't actually have a lot of experience working with grapes, um, but it might be something that we'll try to work with and develop. If we walk out the back of the greenhouse, we've got our tiny little compost cage. I'll show you guys where our big compost is later. So one of the two main things that we got done last year was getting the greenhouse up and running. The second one is getting the hoop house up and running. And I gotta walk down the hill for that a little bit. And here is the hoop house, which is now functional. Wait till you guys see what's inside. Yeah, everything's going great here. I'm gonna trip over a ditch but we've got okra, we've got different varieties of tomatoes that are doing absolutely beautifully. We've got a few carrots, some onions, lots and lots of tomatoes. Up. Beets, which keep getting munched. The uh, cucumbers are basically at the end of their season. And we've got watermelon coming on. Look at these stripy guys. So beautiful, beautiful watermelons. Lovely. And then these radishes. These radishes, these black radishes are just some of the spiciest radishes I've ever had. They're so tasty and beautiful. Hey you rooster, what's up? Behind me are the uh, chicken coops and the Kirk barn. We didn't really work with the animals basically at all last year. And depending on how uh, <laughs> my two students feel, we might be working with them this year. In the chicken coop, it looks like all the girls are hiding in here. These are the few uh, adult layers that we have right now, but we've actually got a bunch of, oh, you're about to go land. We've actually got a bunch of new young pullets coming on. Can you hear the sound of baby chickens? Baby chickens? <laughs> Lots of young pullets. They're not out to range just yet, but they still making peepee -pee sounds. Little peepee -pee sounds. So cute. And the Kirk barn is actually empty right now, so I'm gonna go on a walk to the front of campus 
to see the cattle and the goats, which are pretty much out grazing all the time this time of year. <laughs> there to go! We've actually got the goats. Hi! We've actually got these guys clearing uh, a bunch of the brush by the woodshop building. Hi guys! These little cuties. What's up? What's up, you little know? This is our weed control over some uh, hot wire <laughs> and we're going to head on down to the island. Hey guys. The island is beautiful. The whole lake is beautiful. So last year we worked on developing or worked on uh, controlling the weeds in the lake and as you can see we're at the same time this year let me get out on the bridge <laughs> and there are not too many weeds there's a little bit close to shore but nothing like it was last year so this year what I'd like to do is try and do what's called sound the lake and that's basically I want to determine how deep it is and not just in one spot but go in a grid pattern across the lake to determine how deep it is in a given section. I haven't determined exactly how I'm going to grid it. Um, like how precise I want that that to be but ultimately we we'll want to get an idea of how much water is actually here and start to get an idea of what our thermocline is like so that we can start thinking about whether we need some sort of aeration and what kinds of fish we might want to grow in here Walking back around to the other side of the lake. Do, 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 do. That's just so nice. So nice. This is what makes me think that this lake is probably pretty deep because what I'm standing on right now is a dam. And off the other side of the dam, I guess you can't see it too well, but that drops right on off down into a gully. And what they did to make the lake was basically dam off the part of the gully and fill it with water. So this could be a very, very deep body of water. I don't know that you can actually see the little fish, but there seems to be a healthy population of fish in the lake currently, judging by the population of fry. Oh, so cute. Little tiny baby fishies. Continuing along the dam, we get to head up towards the Tao Ranch. And that's where we've got uh, a lot more space for uh, producing enough produce, producing enough produce, wow, redundancy, uh, for actually serving in the kitchen. We've got a bunch of bush beans fenced off is what you can kind of see in front of me, maybe on the horizon. Maybe you can't, the sun's kind of in our eyes. Mud puddles. So uh, most of this is in hay right now, but we do have some uh, crops for we humans to eat. But some of the area ended up tilled and never planted, and we had 
a big old round of rain and got some erosion. So one of the goals for the ag class will be to plant cover crops on this so that uh, we end up limiting that from occurring out of the hay and onto where it's tilled. You can see we've got gullies cutting through where it's been tilled. So this definitely needs a cover crop. And these were the bush beans that I was mentioning. If I can walk forward. Bush beans. Very nice. There's also a lot of lamb's quarters, which are very tasty. They're a wild plant, but they're good, man. Past the bush beans. And we're gonna head up past the Tau Ranch and towards the Tabor Farm. So all these different farms and ranches are part of the Olney Friends School property area. But they all get to keep their old family names, which I think is pretty darn cool. Before we say goodbye to the Tower Ranch, I wanted to poke my head in here. I love these old barns. So nice. It's a bank barn. It smells so nice in here right now. It's lovely. Okay, onward, upward, towards the Tabor Farm. As we're heading down the drive towards the Tabor Farm, we've got a little side note. This is Johnson's grass. Um, is an invasive species from somewhere in Asia. I cannot remember. I apologize. Uh, but it spreads by both seeds and by rhizomes, and it's extremely difficult to control. It's not good, and it spreads really quickly. We're gonna make some paper out of this, uh, just like we did last year, and we're gonna try burning these seed heads to try and kill it that way, and we'll pull out some of the rhizomes. See what we can do about controlling this stuff. Across the road, and we're now over at the Tabor Farm. The Tabor Farm used to have a nice old barn like the Tau Ranch does, but I think it was like in 2012, a big old tornado came hop skipping across the hills and twisted the whole thing on its foundations. This building is really cool. Nice but this is where we have our composting down here. So we compost not just the cow manure, most of it's gone, but not just the cow manure, but also all of the leaves for the city of Barn. And so we get this very nice, lovely, this is some finished compost nice, dark, beautiful soil that just smells so nice. And up, if we continue past this, up over, up over this way, we have the old orchard and another one of our hay fields. And this used to be um, in strips growing corn with the strips of hay in between to prevent erosion because the slopes here tend to allow uh, erosion to occur. The apple orchard over here is extremely old and a lot of the trees are not very productive. What I'd like to do with the orchard in this regard is try to start a new younger orchard over closer to top campus where it can be properly cared for. But yeah, this has been my uh, highly abridged uh, farm tour of Only Friends School. There's a lot of things that I left out and definitely a lot of things that I forgot and things that I still don't know. I only came here 
just last year and I've still got so much to learn, but I'm really excited about the things that the Ag Sci class is going to be able to do this year. And actually last year, our class kind of got cut short a little bit because of, um, well, virus which shall not be named. And I don't know, the, those kids that actually ended up growing gardens at home, I had them take what they learned in the class and apply it at home, trying to grow their own garden. But yeah, this year is gonna be very interesting and I'm really excited for it. I'm not sure how to close this video out, but I suppose I will be seeing you in that next video. Bye!